Okay, this is how you make a cardboard fingerboard. So, the first things you're going to need is probably glue. Glue would probably be a good thing to have for this, because if you didn't have glue, I don't know how you'd bind the thing together. And uh, you'll, also, you'll also need a brush. And uh, don't forget that you'll need that you'll need a, a, a lot of cardboard. You're going to need to cut out cardboard. You're going to need about five pieces. That's just what I found is the best amount of pieces. Uh, referring on what you want, you can get a, a, a something you want on the back. I don't know what you'd call that. You can put anything you want on the back. I've just chosen some brick because I have I have a lot of this brick paper here. So this is just what I decided to use. It'd be easy to throw together for the video. And uh, you're also, of course, going to need uh, two tech decks or you can get a fingerboard mold. That's by far the easiest way to go, but those aren't very easy to find unless you make them, of course, which is a whole nother process. So you get two fingerboards. So basically how this works, you get two fingerboards, chuck some glue in the middle of each piece, bind them together with these clips, come back in a couple days, and you got a fingerboard. Okay, so, so the first step that you're going to need to do is you're going to need to take... You're gonna need to take this cardboard. I got this cardboard from the back of some like notepads. Anything could work if you can find cardboard uh, just a little bit thicker than paper. If it if it makes like a wavy sound like that, it's probably good. That's what I found is the best. At least all of these papers that make the wavy sound are the best. So, and the clips just bind them together. I probably already said that because I'm stupid. And then uh, you're gonna need a pen to draw out the things. You're also probably gonna need some grip tape. Uh, or something tech deck related, I'm guessing. 32 millimeters is usually the best, at least in the fingerboard community. It's considered the best because it's easier to control. Sorry, I'm on a tangent, but... Yeah, those, those you'll just draw out the shape of what you want and then cut out pieces according to what you want. I'm, I'm either making, a, out of this one, a 32 millimeter or a 34 millimeter. I'm not entirely sure. But I just made it so I can either make a 32 millimeter or a 34 millimeter pretty easily. So, and then you just cut out four other pieces and they'll go together. Yeah, you get it. And then you got the clips to bind them, and uh, that's about it. I'll come back when I put all the glue on all the pieces, and I'll I'll show you that. I just thought I'd add in how to how to glue it. So basically, how you glue it is you take your paintbrush or whatever. This is just a cheap foam thing. You could probably get them at the dollar store. And uh, you take your, your paintbrush and dip it in the glue, and then you just spread it on. And you also don't want to forget that you have a, uh, you want to make sure you have some cardboard to put it on. You'll end up throwing this out at the end. It's kind of, yeah. This is just a painted on so you don't get the glue on it. Just thought I'd add that. And just so you know, a good amount of glue is just so that you can barely see the brown of the paper at the back. You can just barely see it, so that's how you know that you have a good amount of glue. Once you're, once you're finished putting the glue on all your pieces, you're pretty much ready to go to the mold. So that's when you get your fingerboards, press it in the middle. This is definitely the hardest part in my opinion. You can get the clamps and put them together. So this is definitely the hardest part. This is probably where most people would struggle. So yeah, good luck. Okay, so when you're done putting your fingerboard in its mold, this is how it should look. These, oh, this is the arrangement of the the clips, you should probably put it on to cover the most surface area. Uh, you'll have some glue pouring out the sides, that's not a big deal. That'll dry up and flake off when you're done. And you can see a small bit of my brick design there. So if the camera doesn't focus, it's a crappy iPhone 7. There we go. We got the we got the brick designs that you can see on the sides and hopefully this comes out pretty well, but that'll probably be the end of this video and I'll make a I don't know, I'll, I'll come back in a couple days and show you how it turned out. And, and yeah, you, you do want to give this a couple days. A day, I found, usually isn't enough time. About two days, you should probably give it. And then uh, the last thing you should do is, uh, I forgot about this. Uh, go to your local hardware, hardware store, or even Walmart sells this stuff. Just get some sandpaper. The, is it, the lowest number you see on it, this is 60 grid sandpaper, it's usually the best to use. So... I, so this is just what I found and it works pretty good. Just saying that the sanding process can take, depending on your sandpaper, anywhere from 30 minutes to 3 hours. 
So, depend, it really just depends on your sandpaper, the quality of it. And uh, when you're done with them, uh, it's usually a very satis satisfying outcome. And this is, how, this is how my last one turned out looking. They will get a little bit roughed up on the sides if you want to... Sorry, I won't focus. If you want to round up the corners. There you go. It's focusing a little bit. If you round up the corner, there you go. If you round up the corners, or the corners, bleh, if you just round up the edges, uh, usually it's pretty good. I just put some really thin grid sandpaper on here. It's not quite foam, foam grip tape, but I don't know. I don't really feel a difference between regular grip tape and foam grip tape. It doesn't really bother me. And I literally made this one out of the bottom of the cereal box. And these things are usually pretty strong. They don't have much flex to them. See, I'm pushing as hard as I can right now, no flex. And you just put the trucks through them. I actually make my own bushings out of hand sanitizer containers, like the rubber things, and they actually turn really smooth. It's pretty cool. And the thing is with this is you can get so much more versatile. You can do whatever you want. Instead of going out to the store and just buying some tech decks and hope and hoping, oh, I hope this one's good. This one better be good. Or or going, oh, I don't know if I like that one this much, that much. You can make this whatever you want, whatever shape you want. You can make it. You can make any kind of fingerboard that you want. It doesn't matter. You can make a fingerboard that looks like, I don't know, you, you, could, you don't even have to sand it and it would still work. It wouldn't look good. But you could make like an old school fingerboard. Like, uh, I don't know, just whatever you want. That's what makes it so cool. This is just a tutorial on if you're trying to get into making these. It's, it's kind of fun to do. If you, if you want to get into making these, it's just a, go, a good method I found of making them. You can also use wood. That works pretty good too, but you're definitely going to end up needing a vise and a fingerboard mold for those. For cardboard, just using Tech Dex will do. Like, you can already see that... Uh, one second, let me just get this off. You can already see that it's starting to take that shape pretty good. There's a, maybe a small gap down there. But not much at when it's in. Just give it a couple days and it'll keep that shape. And make sure not to take it out of the container until those two days are done. Because if you put those, those tech decks back in the wrong orientation. Or if you just put them on Cricut a little bit. They could end up messing up the whole fingerboard. Half of it's hardened in one way. Another half is hardened in another way. It just won't turn out good. So I recommend keeping the mold on for at least, uh, at least 24 hours and checking it. And then... And then maybe come back in another day, and it's I can almost guarantee it'll be done by 48 hours. And by then, you just take the sandpaper and freaking go at it until you get your desired shape, and until you get your desired roundness. So, I really appreciate you guys watching this video. Uh, I really appreciate the support. My channel isn't too big, but I don't know. I just find it more fun to make these. My friend Tucker asked me to make this video just because it helped him and helped maybe even a couple other people out there to make these so just in case you didn't know the full process this is a pretty good way to do it in my opinion so thanks for watching uh, i guess i'll see you guys next time however long that'll be